who wants to talk about some obscure Genesis games? Who wants to talk about some hidden gems? Some ones that you maybe see, yeah, I love that. And I hope I curated some good ones because if there's one thing that always comes to me with, uh, with, with, and really with any gaming console out of anything, is finding the weird and obscure. The ones that I feel like just tremendous games that don't get enough love, that I really want to put a spotlight on. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're basically going to do what I counted 10 obscure games that I feel you must play. Because that's also one of my series on YouTube is Level 10. It's, it's my list series. Consider this kind of like that, but just obscure Genesis games that you must play. The first one's gonna be very familiar. You're probably sure I'm gonna, it's like, you know I'm gonna talk about this game. Yes, we're gonna talk about El Viento. I figured let's just go ahead and do it first. <laughs> so for those of y'all that don't know, this is one of my favorite games of all time. I have to keep it brief because I will gush about this game for hours. Um, but El Viento, it's a side scroller from the Wolf Team, like a renovation products. So basically it's about a treasure hunter who while he was out treasure hunting in the mines, he actually came upon a Peruvian sorceress by the name of Annette. And this Peruvian sorceress is chosen because she actually is crafted from the blood of an ancient god. And that ancient god is about to be resurrected by a maniacal syndicate. And that maniacal syndicate actually is using another girl to resurrect the god with the blood of Hastur, all while actually maintaining a relationship with Al Capone. Yes, Al Capone. <laughs> This is all set in the 1920s, by the way. And you get to travel the world, you get to go to Mount Rushmore, you get to go to Detroit, you get to go to Chicago, and you finally end up at the Empire State Building. Oh yeah, you fight Cthulhu. Yeah, while riding a dolphin. <laughs> Swinging on boomerangs, using fire powers, screen filling explosions, and the explosions, we're talking like Michael Bay, boom, like explosions. The amount of what this game can do, you really kind of feel like the Genesis is gonna break at any moment. But that's kind of how Wolf Team does. I mean, their, their games just are, were really made to show off what the Genesis can do. And this is a tremendous game. And it was a game that was really, really hard to find and hard to get nowadays, but thanks to the wonderful people at Retrobit, they recently are put, or they're about to release a re-release of this game, like an official re-release of this game. It's also on the Evercade. Like, it's, it's a tremendous side scroll. If you're into those kinds of games, I implore you, you need to check this game out. And if you ever need any hints and uh, like any hints or tips about it, DM me, message me, like for sure. I actually did, the funny thing is, is that I was part of the official Retrobit release for this game, and so I was on their official stream for it, and I played through this game so much, I did it deathless, pure deathless run, like of this game. And it was so funny because afterwards, it was just like, ow, like, I played this game a lot. So if you ever need any, any hints and tips on it, hit me up, like hit me up for sure. The next one I wanted to talk about is a beat-em-up called Mystical Fighter. Yes. Oh, there you guys see. I hear some people in the crowd. I hear some people in the crowd about that. Yeah, who, who here's played it? Who here has played this? Nobody talks about this game. It's excellent. So it's like when people think about beat-em-ups for Genesis, they generally think of Streets of Rage or Ninja Turtles. They don't really think about any of the other ones. This is one you definitely need to put, or Golden Axe. Sorry, respect to Golden Axe. This is one you absolutely need to put on your list. Like if you love beat-em-ups, this was published by Taito in Japan, published by DreamWorks, not the movie DreamWorks. Uh, they published by that in America. It's also known as Demon King Renjishi, or just simply as Kabuki. And you're a Kabuki fighter that is a beat-em-up as you go from a belt action game that you fight gigantic like monsters and different enemies. You have screen clearing attacks. You can actually hit a giant gong to take out everybody on the screen. You can do giant swings. Like you can swing your enemies around and toss them across with reckless abandon. And the two-player mode is so smooth and so fun and just, it's one of those pure games that's just like, you look at it on the surface level and it doesn't look like much. But when you actually play this, it's a blast. This one actually, it is a blast. And it's good and challenging too. So, and so much flair. It's, it's another one that just like El Viento, the style is what really sells the game, like out of anything. So it's, it's another one I highly, highly recommend checking out. How about this one? Who's heard of Elemental Master? Uh, this is Elemental Master. This one's done from Technosoft, the Thunder Force team. And instead of you being in a ship, it's more of a, a fantasy style environment where you're on foot. So it's a vertical on foot shooter that has, you can immediately feel the Technosoft vibes as soon as you start this game, complete down to the graphics and the style. It even has cutscenes and a story too. Granted that story's kind of nonsensical, but, but it's, a, it's a lot of fun and you earn multiple different types. There's five different types of magic attacks that you could do, and you have the ability to shoot backward and forward. 
So even when you have enemies coming behind you, there's one downside I always never like in shooters and in, in shoot 'em ups is whenever you can only scroll vertically and you can't shoot behind you. And when enemies come behind you, a little momentum master fixes that. So you can actually shoot up and you can shoot down, and you can also charge some of your other events, or your other uh, your other weapons too, and you can create mimics of yourself that actually act as shields. So it's it's really really cool, and the soundtrack is incredible. Soundtrack is absolutely incredible. It's one of the Toshiki Haru Yamanishi, uh, the composer of Thunder Force 4 and the Genesis version of Dragon's Fury, aka uh, Devil's Crush or Devil's Crash. This is one that really goes under a lot of people's radars. I think it kind of has to do with the name, like really out of anything. It's like it's kind of a it's kind of an also ran name, but uh, but it's a wonderful, wonderful game. It's on the Genesis Mini 2, which was shocking to me that that one made it to the Genesis Mini 2 lineup. I was like, what? But no, no, it's a it's a wonderful game. So I love Sonic. I love mascot platformers. It's a high seas havoc. People will qualm this one off at the very beginning that it's just oh it's just a Sonic clone. There's so many Sonic clones out there. And to me, there's nothing wrong with being inspired by another game, especially when you're inspired by another game and you're just as rock solid and as gorgeous as High Seas Havoc is. So High Seas Havoc is your tale. It's the tale of Captain Lang. Are Captain Lang, a pirate seal in this absolutely gorgeous platformer from Data East. So it's done from the ground up by Data East. You have a flash kick style attack, you jump on your enemies, and it's just one of those games that I love dearly, and I think I figured out what it is. Because for the time, when I played High Seas Havoc as a kid, I kind of passed it off. I was like, oh, that's good, it's good. And I was like, oh, you know, it's fine. But then I went back, I got challenged by a certain member in the audience right now. I got challenged to stream this a while back. And when I streamed it, I was like, I found a whole new respect for this game. And it's just, it's, in my opinion, it is one of the most gorgeous games on the console. This beautiful animation, outstanding colors, huge bosses that all animate clearly. Transparencies, this game is transparencies, which is really unheard of as far as graphic wise on the Genesis. And it's just, it's so solid. It's just an incredibly solidly well-made game. But there was this one little thing that I had to kind of figure out, I was like, what really caught this game for me. It's the Disney vibes. The game absolutely pulls off a Disney look and feel. And I, I grew up in a Disney house. We currently, me and my wife, we currently are a Disney household ourselves. And I, I, it just clicked with me. It's like, it's inspired by Disney. It definitely is. And another thing about High Seas Havoc 2 is that it has a great level of challenge. It's not too hard. It's not too easy. Once you start getting through it, the, the final level will take you a while to get past. But you'll never want to give up. Like, it's a great one. You just, like, you just want to keep going. It's one of those good, perfectly kind of level difficulty games. This game, in such a short amount of time, wound up becoming one of my favorites on the console. And to me, it's, it is a must, must play. Just if you're in the UK, beware of that box art. As I was doing research for this, uh, for setting this up for today, I looked at all the different box arts to use for the, for the slides, and I found the UK box art for this game. Oh. <laughs> It's, uh, it's not good. It's pretty ugly. I actually want to do a video about like the best and worst box out of the Mega Drive. I would love to do that. But because that would easily make the list. But don't let that deter you. This is, if you like side-scrolling platformers, this is another must play. Absolutely must play. Who here knows about Treasure Co? The, the, uh, the developer Treasure Co? Treasure Co? Gunstar Heroes, Guardian Heroes, all that good stuff. So it's like, you know Gunstar Heroes, right? Well, have you ever heard of Light Crusader. Yes. Yeah. So Light Crusader is another one that I feel, and I, I think I have a couple of reasons behind it. So this was a kind of a late release. It came out in 1995, that wonderful year of 95 for Sega. I think it really just comes down to that it kind of came out of nowhere as a Western fantasy looking dungeon crawler to come from Treasure. You would have never really expected that, especially for those who played like Landstalker, who was done by Climax, as that distinct anime look. This, they decided to go for a realistic Western style, and it was a nice breath of fresh air, because you couldn't really, you didn't really see action RPGs with that kind of style, on, at least on the Genesis at that time. And it is an absolutely gorgeous game. And, but I feel the reason why people missed out on it is because it came out so late. It didn't really get any kind of promotion, but I think one of the things I love about Light Crusader so much are the puzzles. So with every like Zelda-style action game, there's always a degree of puzzles, right? And the puzzles in this game are so much fun to figure out. It's like as soon as you walk into a room, you hear, answer the riddle. I'm like, ooh, 
what you got for me next. That's what I love about this. And you have a multitude of different types of magic. You got your, your fire magic, your water magic, your earth magic, your wind magic. And so as you're figuring out the magic, you can mix and match from another certain treasure action game that I think they might have borrowed this concept from. You can mix and match uh, the different types of magic to see what works out best for you. Some of them are homing seeking. Some of them will clear the screen. Some of them actually give water abilities for you. Some will give you an extra shield or heal you. And it's really neat to figure out which combination works best for either the puzzles or fighting the enemies. If you want some, some, like, some good chill vibes for Genesis, so I'm also huge into music on the Genesis. If you ever listen to the menu music of Light Crusader, I swear I could just sit with like some herbal tea and just chill out to that menu music for hours on end. <laughs> it's like, and it's, it's, it's widely available. So this one's not quite as obscure as some of the others, but I do feel it's one that needs a lot more love, especially if you're in the Lance Docker. To me, this game is nothing against Lance Docker. Lance Docker is great, don't get me wrong. But to me, I like this game better. This is another one that was recently brought up to me thanks to growing up Genesis in stream. This is Devilish, the next possession. Devilish. It's done by Isis in Tokyo and published by Sage's Creation. This one's actually a sequel. The original came out on Game Gear and the sequel came out on Genesis. So let me break this down to you. Who here are fans of Breakout or Arkanoid? Okay. So the concept of this game is that a prince and a princess basically get possessed by this evil demon and they're turned into breakout paddles. Mr. and Miss. And essentially, they, you can control the panels where they're either horizontal, vertical, you can angle them in different types, and you hit the ball to, to get to the end of the stage just like you would with like Arkanoid or Breakout. And it's really hard to explain why I, I fell in love with this game very quickly. Because I remember playing it when I was a kid, and I was like, because I got to rent a lot of games as a kid. So I remember renting it, and I had no idea what I was doing. It's like, I have no idea what this is. I had never played Arkanoid before, so I had no idea what this is. But this is another one that I picked up during stream, and I was like, this is awesome. And it was like, are we going to do this again the next day? Yeah, we're going to do this again the next day. It's like, I want another shot at this game. It's like, it's, it's wonderful. The boss fights are also huge and a lot of fun trying to figure out like where the weak points are and where to hit, where to find the bonus extra items. And then the music, all oh, the music, the music in this game is incredible. It was done by uh, Hitoshi Sakamoto, who is the same composer of Gauntlet 4 and the Genesis rendition of Captain America and the Avengers. Midnight Resistance, another Data East classic. A couple of other ones that they did the music for. This is another one that like, it, it's weird, especially because the box art kind of doesn't really tell you what you're in for. But if you're curious about this, you might have fun with this one. And I, I really enjoyed it. I played this one on, on the way up here on my analog pocket. And uh, it's like, once again, this one's an originally part of today. I added it in there yesterday because I was like, no, I want to talk about Devilish. <laughs> so it's like, no, it's a, it's a great one. Going back to, to, to space shooters now, uh, this is Glay Lancer, also known as Advanced Buster Hawk Glay Lancer. And this is a absolutely stunning side-scrolling shmup from Messiah Games and NCS, only released in Japan until now. Who here were readers of Die Hard Game Fan? back in the day. Anybody remember? Okay, cool. So it's like, you remember Die Hard Game Fan. I remember distinctly in Die Hard Game Fan in Import Core. Like they, would ex they would cover import games that either they would really love to see get localized, or didn't get localized, and I remember Glay Lancer getting a lot of coverage, and I wanted this game as a kid. Even though I had Sega Channel, and sometimes Sega Channel would bring in imports, they never picked up this one. Like, this is another one that never really, so it seems like with shooters on the Genesis, what I really love about it is that every single one has a different mechanic. And with a handful of exceptions of some that aren't so great, like it feels like every one of them should be worth checking out. What I love about Glay Lancer is that you basically get like an a la carte familiar system at the very beginning. Like how do you want to control the two familiars that you always have with you? Do you want them to be free roaming? Do you want them to automatically rotate? Do you want them to be seekers? Do you want them to be static? And then as you're doing that, you have total control of which direction that they're shooting, all while still using three buttons. And once you get into it, it's, it is an incredible game. The parallax scrolling, the music, it's, it's just an outstanding game. It even has like high, a highly detailed story with a female lead. Awesome. It was such a shame that we didn't get it until recently. So this is another one that Retrobit picked up um, and they re-released it. And I mean, I really don't want to like kind of toot my own horn here a little bit, but. Uh, Retrobit actually invited me to be a part of this, and for the first time of this one, just seeing my name in the credits for 
anything in like a manual, like for a Genesis, just for being a part of the, the making of this game is just so incredible. And so now this is, this is now a game that means a tremendous amount to me. If you do want to play it digitally, it is also available on the Switch. Uh, it was available on the Wii Virtual Console like back in the day too, um, but it was never like translated, like officially translated until now. So this, it's an outstanding shooter. And I mean, beyond being a part of it, you should just check this one out anyway. Like, great game. One of the main things that I hear about Genesis, in fact, um, I did a whole panel at Southeast Game Exchange with my buddy Jay from Square Pegs about RPGs on the Genesis. Genesis doesn't have RPGs. I'm like, you're not looking hard enough. There's some, there's some really, really good ones. I mean, we, we might not have the big names like Final Fantasy and Secret of Mana and all of that, but we have Warsong which is also known as Langrisser. What I love about this game is that it takes like that concept of a grid-based um, real-time strategy game, but you have full control of up to like 30 troops at once. It reminds me of a 16-bit version of uh, Dragon Force on the Saturn. Like very simple, it's very easy to get into. It is one of those games that like one wrong move could end your entire game, <laughs> but um, don't let that deter you. The more that you actually learn about the strategic battles, the more that you will gain the skills, and you'll learn about the leveling up system, and there is permadeath, so you do have to kind of keep that in mind, too. Um, it's also known as Langrisser, the Descendants of Light, and also appeared on Japan on the PC Engine. So, but this was the only officially licensed Langrisser game up until, I believe, was it the 3DS, or was it the PSP, that got uh, an official Langrisser release. But it all started with Warsong. And this one also appeared on the Genesis Mini 2 as well. This one may not be obscure because you, I think most of you will know about this game, but you might not know about this version of this game. Marble Madness, one of my all-time favorite arcade games. I love Marble Madness dearly. However, who is familiar with the Western release of Marble Madness, the Electronic Arts release? Yeah, and so for the longest time, I thought that that was the only release of Marble Madness. Only semi-recently did I realize Tengen Games actually made their own version in Japan. And it's a lot more accurate to the arcade. It looks wonderful, it plays wonderful, it sounds wonderful. Cool, two other cool little extra features. It works with the Sega Mega Mouse, which is really cool. And it also works with the Master System Sports Trackball. So you could use both of those with it and it feels almost just like the arcade. It's sick, it's sick. And it has music that doesn't make your ears bleed. So that's a bonus. <laughs> so when growing up Genesis, I generally wanted to keep it the officially licensed games. But there's one un, uh, unlicensed game that I, has become one of, not only one of my favorite games on the system, but one of my favorite games of all time that I wanted to give a little bit of love to, and that is Xenocrisis. Who here has played Xenocrisis? Outstanding twin stick style shooter where you're a pair of army people that basically just save, save the, the world from an alien invasion. That's what it is, save the world from an alien invasion. The bosses are huge, the, the music is just tremendously done by Savage Regime. This game has now kind of become a tradition. Because whenever you have those games that like have multiple endings where like you could get a bad ending if you do a certain thing wrong or you can get the good ending if you, if you wanna know, talk to me afterwards, I can show you how to get the good ending. But yeah, clear out all the aliens, take out the huge bosses, keep kicking butt, complete the two player multiplayer, no slowdown, no flicker, game plays like an absolute beast from beginning to end, and it is tremendously awesome. And it's available on pretty much everything now. But it started with the Mega Drive, and that's why I actually really wanted to, to call attention to it. The homebrew scene on the Mega Drive is so mighty. There's so many different cool unreleased games that you can get now. It's really fascinating. But Xenocrisis is really the one that, that sticks out the most. I love this game, and I still, I know how to get the good ending. I still have yet to get the good ending. So one of these days on stream, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, so yeah. But much love to Bitmap Bureau, and much love for Xenocrisis. It's, it's just, it's a tremendous game. Well, yeah, I, mean, I guess that's it for me. So thank you all very much. Appreciate everybody for being here. I hope to see you all on the streams, see you on YouTube. And as I always say, be you and be awesome. I'm G, and I'll see you on the next level. Thanks, everybody.